Hello, everyone. Welcome. It feels a bit strange welcoming you to your own city for most of you, but welcome to you all and everyone who's watching online as well. Uh, I'm delighted to be here at Break 2023. I feel that there aren't enough events that um, cater specifically for independent labels, independent musicians, especially in the music and, and tech field. So um, it's a joy to be part of this first event. So I've got many hats in music and tech, um, and I think that's a bonus, because I think it gives me a very 360 degree view of what's going on. So I'm a mentor, I'm a lecturer, um, I founded a music and tech website called Kit Monsters that's very inclusive. I'm also an artist, producer, and performer, and very connected to the grassroots music scene in the UK. And uh, for a couple of years, I was a tutor on a, an amazing European scheme called Jump, which um, helped bring on uh, new music businesses across Europe and was a, an amazing force for, for good. And I also um, had the pleasure of uh, reporting on Music Tech Fest, now known as MTF Labs, and also uh, producing some events and being part of the team. So um, there's a sort of synchronicity. And I know um, some of you have had an amazing day with Andrew yesterday, so I hope what happens today will flow on seamlessly. But as we didn't compare notes completely, who knows? Uh, I think the one thing I can say about music and tech is that it's changing very, very quickly, which means it's quite hard to, to keep up, to get across it. And if, you, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, you're not alone, because uh, people who are absolute experts in the field, I was speaking to an AI futurologist just the other day, and he was saying, I keep having to update my presentations you know, five minutes before I give a lecture, because things are changing. And uh, we had this amazing roundtable discussion yesterday uh, in which that came up, that we're all trying to make sense of it. And the best thing to do in the circumstances, in my mind, is to take a step back, focus on what you need and can really help you, and just don't try and get across everything. You know, there are some wonderful websites and curators that will help you through the journey. And what I'm aiming for today is that this is a curated journey. So I'm not going to tell you everything about everything, but what I'm aiming to do is give you some examples, uh, some tools, uh, show you how some independent artists have created projects, and I'm hoping that all of you find something to, to think about, maybe to inspire you, or to try out. Now, um, okay, I have to make my thing work. Here we go. So, this is the format for today. I think it's always good to know where you are. So, we're going to have some talking. That will be mostly me, but some of you as well. Uh, we're going to have some activities. So, hopefully that will be fun and interesting. And there will be a break. We get some coffee at 11.30. And also um, question and answers at the end. If you've got questions as we go along that relate to where we are, I'm very happy to take them. But because there's quite a bit to get through and we uh, have to finish at 1 o'clock um, sharply, um, I don't want to get into a really deep philosophical discussion halfway through because I want you to try and get as much benefit out of this as possible. So I've told you a little bit about me, and now what I'd like to do is find out a little bit about you, just to get a sense of who's in the room and uh, where we might want to go. So uh, what I've got here is a very simple two-question quiz. And one question is, what is your role in music? And the other question is, how do you feel about new technologies, including the metaverse? And if you um, either go to the website, www.menti.com, and use the code or the QR code, it should take you there. And there are um, three possible answers on each question. So if you've got more than one role, I know many of us do, then you can put that in. And um, we will be seeing the results. There are no wrong answers, and it's anonymous. So if you want to put your dazed and confused, that's completely fine. But have a little go at that. Are you finding it on your phones OK? Don't 
sorry. The code is 69626966. Great, I can already see some of you popping up here. Um, storyteller, music producer, mix engineer. I think we possibly have to do one question first and then the next. Um, uh, so yes, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Sound artist, enthusiast, musician, label manager, performer, great. Singer, has anybody not contributed yet? <laughs> okay. Keyboardist, excellent. Can you see the second question, or do I need to pop that on? Okay, well, let's finish this one first, because um, and then move on to that. Uh, explorer, that's a lovely word. I, I hope we're going to be doing some exploring in this session. Okay, everybody got that one? Yeah. Right. Let's let's see how you're not well versed. Well, you've come to the right place. Break 2023. We will verse you. Curious, that's always good. Overwhelmed, daunted, excited, all very valid things to say. So I think if we come out of this session and you're a bit more enthusiastic and a bit less daunted, we'll consider that a, a win. Maybe I'll have to come back to it after. Scattered. Yeah, poor. There is optimism, there is hope. Um, okay, has everyone had a go at that? Yeah? Okay. Questioning, actually that does come up. It's always good to question. They help a lot. Okay, great, I'm gonna close that now and go back to the, uh, to the main event. But thank you, I think it's really good to get a, a sense of, of what everyone's doing. So we've done Menti. And we've done the results. What happens now? Right. Um, this is about entrepreneurship as well as creativity and technology. So I'm going to pick out the top entrepreneur ratio that comes up in every accelerator, whether it's music or anything, because I think it's worth applying to you as a creative as well. So this is 80, the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. We could all do with a bit more 80-20 to not feel scattered and overwhelmed. So, uh, and this, to sum it up, is uh, that 20% uh, of your efforts can achieve 80% of the results. If anyone's got a better sum up, I'm very happy to, to hear your version of it. Uh, so what it essentially means, if we focus on the good core thing, we can do so much more than if we scatter ourselves about a bit and focus on too many things. And I think it's really important to bear that in mind when we're looking at new technologies, especially when we look at AI. Um, and talking of overwhelm and being daunted and exploring, so very, very recently, Google Music LM came out and I had a little play with it. And I was trying to see how, how good it was and whether whether I could get something a bit Portuguese in the mix, in my prompt, and I tried things, you know, music, electronic music, traveling to Aveiro, um, Portugal, you know, and uh, it was very clever because it gave you two options. So every time you put in a prompt, it came up with two little sections of the track, and you had to vote on which one you liked best. So you were training it, and I think you were being trained at the same time. So um, each of these boxes has a little clip, and to get to the next slide, I've got to play them all. So I might end up playing them all together. But don't worry, it's just a little kind of flavour of everything. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Okay, that was not so that, not so tuneful. Let me just. Um, anyway, I'm not saying this is great art, but it's just what's happening right now.
seconds is a different prompt, if you see what I mean. Um, any very quick thoughts on that? Did it grab you? Was it sold? Did Eric <laughs> Obviously, one can always blame the prompt engineer. That's the person who writes the, the text in. There was a, a discussion about that at the round table as well. Um, but it's, you know, they've opened it up to everyone, and it's a start. I'm sure it'll learn things very quickly. But I think um, it's always worth dipping in and trying these things, because then you can make your own opinions. <laughs>
Um, Dada Bots, uh, MT, I don't know if you call it MTF Labs alumnus or he's still working closely with MTF, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, all sorts of amazing projects in AI, whether it's deep fake uh, testing out Nirvana and Gorillas mashups, or providing lots of um, samples, um, a generative heavy metal, dark heavy metal channel on YouTube. Brilliant, okay. I, I thought there might be some overlap, so anyway, that's good. Um, uh, interesting, American band called Yacht a few years ago, they trained an AI on their old work to make a new album. And they made an amazing album and then realized that lots of it was really hard to play because the AI had created it. So they had to have a, a bit of a rethink. And uh, I saw their performance in London. That's how I know it was hard to play because they told me. Um, and there's an artist, a UK artist called Patton. And he's done uh, what's billed as the first album made entirely from AI samples. So he got samples from uh, text prompts using Refusion and then he created a whole album from that, and that's on Bandcamp. So if you want to check out Patton, as somebody who's uh, doing something innovative in AI, I'd recommend Patton. Um, and Grimes, who's got an AI Grimes that people can play with. So um, that's all very recent that, that Grimes has opened up. Um, and what's nice to see is that some people are making a real attempt, um, a very, uh, outspoken attempt at democratization. And some of this is from big players. Adobe teaming up with Google to enable AR, that's um, enable people to use, create AR more easily, uh, which is very, very recent. Uh, we've seen this, I gave you the example earlier. Um, we've also got creator studios. Now, if you want to do something special in tech and you don't even know where to start, the thing to do is, is see who's doing interesting things, because all these creator studios, they want people to be to test, they want people to work with, they like having an artist they can put on their website saying so-and-so is using, uh, you know, using our tech, we're working with them. So people are trying to open things up and be inclusive. Uh, and so independent artists uh, are doing this. Holly Herndon, coming back to her, she's got her Holly Plus um, AI, and it's a very simple interface. And what you can do is put in your arrangement, and there are some simple controls, and her AI will provide some vocals. And then you can um, submit it to Holly, and uh, the ones she likes best will be released, and you get a share of the profits. So that really is amazing, I think, that she's opened her work up to that extent. The other thing she's doing is she's also running um, a, a database called Spawning, where people can register their works to not be used for AI training. So um, there's a special text uh, for it, which I'm actually going to read out, <laughs> because I can't read it. They, um, they don't, uh, where is it? Oh, I've lost it temporarily. Anyway, she's, she's got a special description. It's like kind of at the frontier of just saying no to AI training. Uh, on your work, and you can submit visual and audio work to that. So again, uh, artist pioneers are doing really cool stuff. Um, there's an artist called Portrait XO, and she had an installation, made a, an AI instrument. Again, she's opened that up for people to, to use. Um, she's also participated in the AI song contest. So if any of you do something really cool using AI, it doesn't have to be just made in AI but with some AI element, you can submit it for the AI contest, which has been running for a few years, and um, the, the website makes it very, very easy to find. And I mentioned DataBots earlier, they've got AI samples on there. Uh, this is Portraits, AI self-portrait, which I think is absolutely lovely. Um, and then when it comes to tools, I think they fall broadly into two camps. There's creative tools and there's services. So in terms of services, there's things like chatbots, which major labels are using for fan engagement um, on uh, Facebook and Messenger and so on. Um, I'm not sure independents have budgets to use that kind of thing, but it's good to be aware of. There are tools like mastering. You can get online mastering at Lander. Um, that 
opens up mastering to more people, potentially. Um, obviously, a lot of artists want bespoke mastering, but these tools are, are there. And there are a whole load of compositional tools that will help you with ideas or to complete things. Um, I tried out a very interesting tool from Kieku, and it's called Bass Player. And they're aiming to do a whole band's worth of tools, but the first one was Bass Player. And it's where you can put in a start of a song or some arrangement, and it will come up with some uh, riffs for you. And I actually found it really good. I thought, if I'd been stuck on that song, I'm not often stuck on a song, to be honest, but if I was stuck, um, the, these bass riffs were perfectly acceptable if I played them in my style. Um, so, you know, there's lots there to explore. And then we come to ChatGPT. Now, there's so much going on in ChatGPT that I'm going to just talk about one very brief example, just to give you a feel for how artists are using it. So, this is uh, iDoris. They call themselves uh, Kitchen Punks Mummy Core Band, based in London. They're actually brilliant songwriters. I wish they'd do Eurovision, but I don't think they've been invited. And uh, anyway, so they asked ChatGPT to write a song, and this is what we got. Um, I don't know if you can read it okay. Uh, I wake up in the morning feeling kind of strange. I know that I should get up, but my mind just won't engage. I look into the mirror, I see a face that's tired and old, but I know that I've got something, something I need to hold. I, I, I am Doris. I've got the power to make it through. I, I, I am Doris, and nothing can stop me. No, nothing can hold me down. Now, um, I have to say, I think that's slightly respectable, because uh, there are songs with much worse <laughs> lyrics than that. But for them, it's a bit of a kind of step down. But I, think, I thought it was lovely that they were just engaging with it and trying it out, and I think it's good for everyone to do. Now, the, um, the founder of iDoris, Cassie Fox, also runs a festival called Loud Women Fest, which every year picks uh, some of the best female band bands around. It's getting more and more international as it goes on. And um, we were having a conversation about ChatGPT, and she said she's actually been using it for event planning. It's been very useful to do things like uh, find out the um, birthdays of female singers, so she can post social media posts, and uh, just get some of the um, blog posts started. So I think it's interesting to see that, you know, at a very concrete level, People are using it and finding it useful. Um, I'm sure Andrew had a, a sort of lot to say about it yesterday, but that, that's what I'm going to say about ChatGPT anyway. Um, when it comes to the creative tools, um, I spoke briefly about some of the kinds of things that are around. I'm going to give you a very quick example of something that I've done with Birds on Mars. They're a, a technology organization based in Berlin. And they've been doing some uh, voice synthesis um, uh, AI. And how it works is you, um, they've been working with artists in beta. So it's very personalized. It's like Kuta AI, thank you. Um, so you have to send them half an hour of your voice speaking. And then they train the AI. Uh, and they give you back some models and a simple interface. And you can control pitch, speed, um, and then there's, there's some more song-like quantities, qualities where it will sing a bit. Um, so uh, I experimented with that for my 405 album. And it was very interesting seeing where we started and where we ended up. And I'll, I'll only play you a tiny bit, but I'm going to play you a couple of tests. And in these tests, um, it's a bit more kind of ethereal. Uh, so I'll just let you have a quick listen. <coughs> It's a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit of a so, um, so those were experiments. 
But actually, we decided we're not that kind of band. We're not kind of. We're just not that kind of band. So in the end, we um, we loved experimenting, but actually, we found a completely different purpose for the AI, which was to have the AI as a kind of narrator, as a kind of oracle, uh, to speak things, to speak ideas, and make pronouncements. So in the end, we had an AI cat, who was a, a sort of. Uh, did, you know, came in and out of the album. wasn't all AI cat in, by any means at all. Um, but I think the, the lesson for us was that you know you have to find your purpose. So I think with all of these technologies, you you know need to find out what is right for you. Don't copy other people. Just find your way. Um, now this is the sort of ultimate library of tools. There's a website called FutureTools.io. And I thought, I'd just check how many music tools they've got on there right now. And it was 1,602. So uh, they've got other tools as well for all sorts of things. But if you want to have a sort of quick flick through what's out there and pick something that you think would suit you to try, a lot of these things are free, then uh, Future Tools is, is your tool, I think. Now, um, I think it's time for us all to do something that, that should be uh, a bit of relief for me talking and interesting. So, I would like you to make an AI album cover. I don't think you'll find it very hard. I think we can probably do it in 10 minutes, max. So, if you go to https com slash nightcafe.studio, now, I think generally you can do uh, have one go without creating an account, but if you need to make an account, do. You can always like kill it later. Um, and what you have is you have a, a sort of box where you can do a text prompt, and you can choose about I think three at the moment three different um, generators, and you can choose a visual style. So let's have about ten minutes. Just see how we're doing for, for time. And um, have a go. There's no right or wrong. And then when you've done it, if you want to enhance it, if you want to put some text over it or something, whatever you want to do, but this is supposed to be quick and dirty. We're taking the sort of Ai Weiwei view of this. And upload it to our break Google folder. Because what would be great would be to see what, how you've all done these different things and whether <coughs> we can draw any thoughts. Does this count? Sorry? Does this, uh, uh, does this count? With, with some yes. Like so um, you'll find, let me just look at it, I'll, I'll describe it. So you'll find you have like a visual style, like kind of pop art or cartoony. So you can choose the one you want. So if you like a kind of style, then you just pick that. And then um, the algorithm at the top, they've got one that's in beta. I always go for the beta because it's often the most crazy. Um, and then a box where you can type in your text prompt. And I think you can have a few goes. And then when you've got something you're happy with. How do you use Teams? Why can't you do it on an iPad? Oh, I haven't used it on the iPad, I'm afraid. I've used it on other things, but uh, not on an iPad. Maybe. I'm sure it's fine on the iPad. Maybe. Let me just get my glasses. Has everybody managed to get into it at step one? Have you all managed to get in? Yeah. Okay. I think it's got on a setting where it wants you to give it some reference material. Um, yeah, let's go back to the... Ah, three images, let's see. No, no, create. Um, if anyone's finding they're in a strange place, you want to hit the create button. Sorry, I should have been clearer about yeah. that. And then that should give you, yeah, so you can choose your algorithm, text prompt. Um, Has everyone managed to get in, managed to choose a style? Okay. If you've already got a track out, you could do this as the kind of cover for the remix or something. That might be fun. Oops, sorry.
and it gives you, it generally gives you a sort of composite image and four separate images. So you can probably download all of them, but just upload one to the file. I'm just having to wander around so you can ask me questions. T-shirt range there. Can you put your question to end it? Like I don't think so. With it, I, I haven't tried. I'll be honest. Um, if you, if there are controls, yeah. go away. Experiment. Controls. Sorry. You just have one, one try. Uh, yes, uh, but you get free credits if you create an account. So if uh, if you don't like what you've done, you can create an account, and then it should. Uh, Obviously, I don't want to force people to create accounts with strange things, but sometimes we do. It to yeah, that's yeah. great. Mm, that's very interesting. But again, don't overthink it. It's a bit just something quick, just to show yeah. how you can quickly create things. Yes, please, yeah. I just lost the connection for a minute, so you probably you probably all lost the connection at the same time as me, but because we don't have the permission to upload Yeah, I don't Oh it's okay. I think that was when you said maybe I it was it was set up so yeah, it's not my can you change the permissions thank you so much We've got a good amount of time, so don't feel you have to rush it, but at the same time, say don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Download. That's okay. Yeah, there's a download button. Um, does anybody need a hand with anything? Okay, let's see if any are starting to come in yet. Oh, hooray, we've got our first one in. Um, okay, if that people are having trouble uploading from phones, do you want to just email it to me very quickly? Um, if you do terry, T-E-R-R-Y, at kitmonsters.com, and I'll grab them. Uh, I've got your WhatsApp on a talk tab, does that work for you there? Uh, I'm no, not, it's a bit hard for me to get it into the Avero creative okay. folder, I think. Sure. So, so your email again? Uh, terry, with a Y, at kitmonsters.com. I log into my email.
What I'll do is I'll check whether they've come in on my phone first and then grab them. Right, Dabba, got yours. Yeah, sometimes I think it would be nice to be able to sort of share things with your mind. But yeah. Hey. yeah. Normally, it's very good at keeping things. I'm so sorry. That's I don't no know. Um, no usually, if I go out and go in again, it's it, yeah. it comes back to my stuff. Um, it's maybe. Oh. 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 Uh, oh, no. Was that tantalising? Was that your stuff? That is my stuff. Yeah. Is it now? Uh, there it is. Okay. okay. It's really crappy. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Um, what happens if you click on one? Sorry? What happens if you click on it? Sorry. Sorry, what happens if you click on the one you want? Uh, okay. There we go. Okay, great. Hooray! Okay. Sorry? How do I upload it from here? Uh, you, you have to download it first. Ah, okay. Because we're, we're swapping to a different platform, so uh, it's step by step. I seem louder now, is that okay? Anyway. Um, how's everyone getting on? Is there anybody who, are you all at the stage of uploading now, or downloading and uploading? Uh, yeah, download to my phone, so I have to send it to you, I can get that part. Oh, yeah, if you, um, uh, if you email it to... I have it, I have it right in PDF, and I have to email it to you. Terry, T-E-R-R-Y dot, sorry, Terry at kitmonsters, K-I-T-M-O-N-S-T-E-R-S dot com. Don't, look, you don't need to look at the screen because you're doing something uh, different. Yeah. That's amazing. That's okay. <laughs> okay so you I'll, I'll type it in. Yeah. I, ha I hadn't, um, it's the first time I've done this one, so I hadn't thought about, because I thought people were going to have laptops, but it's fine. It's completely fine. Sorry, even I'm making a, a typing error in my own email.
Okay, um, who's still got something to send or upload? How many, anyone, anyone else not done it yet? No. Okay, I need to collect one more. Daniels has arrived, so I'll just grab it quickly. Can you upload, can, if we can't upload from there, or send it, yeah, Terry with a Y at kitmonsters.com. Um, Daniel, could I just ask you something? Sure. Could you try and just download it, not as a PDF, because it would be nice to be able to see all of them together, and uh, is that hard to do? Um, Oh, save as PDF. That's yeah, that's what I did. I saved as PDF. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just, it's, how, convert to, press convert to JPG. And um, if you download it, SD with, with, oh, we don't, it, yes, because that's a premium one. So, um, can you save image? Yeah, and then if you can do the same again, then we can get them all up at the same time, which would be lovely. Okay. Um, T-E-R-R-Y, I didn't put it up because I thought we were, um, I thought everyone had a laptop, but it was fine. T-E-R-R-R-Y. So I write it down. At Kit Monsters, I should write. I should write it on a thing and put it in front of the projector. Oh, <laughs> eager beaver, right? <laughs> no, that's fine. It's great. And now. Um. We, need, we ought to um, sort of wrap up in terms of having a chance to discuss it before the break. So. Okay, Anna. What have I got? Oh, you've sent me a link. Could you, could you send me a, a, a JPG, possibly? You can save it as that. Okay, let's go. I should have done a very quick put it up on the screen. Yeah, but I didn't, sorry. Okay. Right. Sorry? Um, if you can do a direct upload, I'll, yes, I do, you can, but we need to get something from everybody so we can have the, have the discussion. So. Yes, of course. All my innermost computer workings here. Uh, yes, here we go. Okay, I 
think it, it's very interesting, actually. I think different phones are treating it slightly, have different systems, different ways of processing it, but anyway. Okay, let's upload these final two. Okay, can everyone stop? Right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little look at them all just as a group and then go through them one by one. So um, thank you, everybody. That was an experiment at everyone's end, I think, well, including mine, but we, we've got some covers. So is there anything that you want to observe from seeing them together? Any thoughts? The speed I was. Sorry? The speed I was. Yeah. Anybody else? There are no right or wrong answers. This is just seeing what we make of, of the work we've just done. We skip, we skip at the microphone. They almost look like paintings, most of them. They're very, very washed out kind of approach. Yes. Um, some of that may be the styles picked, yeah. but yes, it's where people's minds are, or people are attracted to that kind of style. Um, anybody else? Let's I would say, actually, if I would, uh, because I draw, if I would draw something, it would be so far away from the result that I got. Interesting. We'll take a look at them individually in a moment, but let's just, why don't we pass it around a bit more and just see if anyone's got any other thoughts well I agree I agree with uh, what she said I was very surprised with, <laughs> with the result I was expecting something completely different anyone else on, on this side of the table any thoughts at all uh, I uh, I feel whenever you uh, prompt whenever I whenever you prompt it with a person or a man or a woman, it always skews the figure. I've noticed this, that like, even in, even the one that's the third one and the one that I drew, mm. it's a little, it's a little distorted, the, the human. Right. It's like their fingers won't be there or something like that. The AI hands problem. Yes, AI is notorious, <laughs> almost all the AI is for doing hands really badly. Um, or very, very funny smiles. There's a whole, I think there's been a whole paper written about AI smiles because they're based on American smiles, which are very wide and very white, and other people's cultures, you know, are, are different. Any other thoughts before we do a quick one, look at each one in more detail? Dubba, you're looking pensive. No, I was just going to say what I wanted was something that was more naturalistic, like a photo I might take on my iPhone, and I couldn't figure out a way to do that. Mm. Um, and so you have these very stylized images because you are picking a style uh, in order to sort of express that. So it does sort of, um, I mean, th there is obviously this creative opportunity in restriction, um, but uh, yeah, it does sort of lead you down certain paths. Yeah. I mean, obviously there are other uh, tools, um, and I, I believe you can upload reference material as well. Um, and actually, I'm going to get on to some visual reference material later. But let's just take a quick look. What I'm going to do is pull each one up, and I'd love you to tell me the album title uh, and maybe a bit about the prompt. So I think, is this one yours, Trevor? Yeah, that was my first one. OK. Um, I think the internet's like being a little bit unfriendly, but hopefully we'll get there. Hmm. Okay, let's try again. Um. Oh, God, sorry. Uh. Okay, opening the preview. So, tell us about the album. Well, grab, no. grab a microphone and tell us about the album. Well, I don't have an album title, um, not being somebody who, who uh, creates music. The actual prompt for this was late night 
panel session about emerging technologies for independent music <laughs> in, in an underground Portuguese dictatorship era cinema. Gosh, all right. So, and that's so, not what I expected. At no, all. no. This is, <laughs> how fascinating. I have to say, that is a very long album title. I know it's, it's a long, long album, album title. title. I don't see the panel session represented <laughs> in any way. But, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. interesting, right. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the next one. So. We've seen the prompt here. This, this has exported things a bit differently. Tell us about this. Yeah, um, I, I'm actually having some trouble with um, AI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a hot horse, you know, and I've tried like so many of them, Mid Journey, you name mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and they don't really come out of that. They even like upload it for all the, the, the I call it bumpy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, never, never come out anything. I have to say, to and my mind, it looks. It's a hobby horse as a bird, actually. Oh, so okay. Bird. That's astonishing. Yeah. That's what a surprise. You've, you've and I'm trying that because I'm asking what I'm Yeah, you found, you found the, the, the a bug. AI. A bug of the AI. The AI black hole or whatever. Um, it looks quite Picasso esque to me. Yeah. Actually, yeah. this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the, do you have an no album title? No, there's no album, there's no title. There's no title. Okay. I'd, I'd like you all to think of a title for your album or your artwork because we. We'll probably want a title a bit later on. Okay. You don't have to tell me now, but well, you actually know you, you can, but if you haven't got one yet. So, whose is this? <laughs> Sorry? It must be somebody's. <laughs> it, can't, it can't have invisibly <laughs> arrived. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, okay, uh, is there a chat that we can, that someone's monitoring from online? That's brilliant. Maybe we can just check who has uploaded. No, no, one, uh, no one actually uh, said something about that before. Okay, well, um, what do we think about this image? How, how do we think she's feeling? What kind of album could it be? Ah, and I hit the cost in my. Okay, so there's someone on the line actually. Fantastic. Okay. Um, is there a chat? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can, uh, I can ask her. Yes, there, okay. There's also a Anna. large lag, so she's only just hearing about you now. Okay. Uh, right, Anna, there's, we've got you. <laughs> there's a lag. We'd love you to tell us a bit about the, the album, the title, the text. But what we'll do, because there's a lag, is we'll go to some of the others first and then we'll come back to you, okay? <laughs> okay, we've got a, it's not a triptych. What's the word for four images? It's a quatric, quartet, anyway, one of those. Um, okay, so whose is this and what's the? Yeah. I don't know what happened, we always retrieve me four results, I don't know why. It gives you a composite and the individual ones, but it's all fine. For the purposes of today, we just want to see what, you know, what you've come up with. They're all ri ridiculous, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just typed, it, it's actually, I, I'm mixing a instrumental rock record, that's what I said. You're mixing it, can you so it's be a bit close oh, to the yeah, mic? It's, um, metal rock record, okay. Not, not metal, just instrumental. Yeah. Uh, I didn't say much, and... Uh, yeah, that's what came out. I think it's all very respectable, actually. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I think I. I won't. All right, you've obviously got very different standards, but I, 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 I get that it's metal. No, but it's not. But it's, but it's not even instrumental. It's instrumental, not metal. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Okay. It's not even metal. Oh, all right. In that case, in that case. Just assume it's metal, but it's not. Ah, oh, so it just found the letters in the in I, the I, word I or something. I work with a designer that I usually just show him the. The record, he, he, he does the, the covers in 30 minutes. Right. He will never come up with this. He's fired. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're picking up various bugs in, in, text, in prompts. Anyway, wonderful. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry for my confusion, but it was so metal. I heard metal instead of instrumental. There we go. 
Okay, art two. Anyone got art two? Is this another? A oh, few. Okay. Tell, um, grab a mic, please, and tell us a bit about your album cover. Uh, so my prompt was uh, an empty street in Paris with a view of the Eiffel Tower during the pandemic, uh, with no humans on the street and two peacocks on the street. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And how do you so, feel about what it came up with? Pretty, I, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done for some excellent prompting. Um, yeah, I can, you know, room for the text and everything for the, yeah, for the I album. I actually did two. There's another one I did. Is there? Okay. Yeah. Right, I'm doing them strictly in order of, in order of appearance, so, so we'll crack on. Okay. So, this one. That's okay. It's always interesting to peer inside your mind. I thought um, I, would, I would actually take a different approach to this one. This one's called, Where the Hell Did I Leave My Keys? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the entire prompt. Okay. There's obviously many options. It could, they could be Do in the... you see the keyboard on the side, though? There's actually a music keyboard <gasps> on the side. So it took from, Where the Hell Did I Leave yeah. My Keys? to actually put a keyboard into the, into the picture, which I think is interesting. That's interesting. Also, to my mind, there's a lot of places you could have left your keys. In the ocean, <laughs> in the decking, it could have, they could have dropped down, yeah. under the benches. Everything's always under the sofa when you lose things. In As it happens, <laughs> I did lose my keys over winter, and they were down the, the slots of the decking, uh, but covered in two metres of snow. So oh, I had my to goodness. Wait for everything to melt. And um, the, so the album's Where Did I Leave My Keys? Yeah. Per perfectly good al album title. Okay. We'll, have, we'll get through these ones, and then we'll, we will have some coffee soon. I think you've earned your coffee. Okay, this is kind of lush. Right, who, who, whose is this? Grab the microphone, tell us a bit. Hi. So this is a uh, sound forest. Uh, that's it. Sound forest? <laughs> yes. And what do you think about the results? Well... I, I was expecting something different, but I'm not really familiar, familiarized with That's the, okay. It's the, the it's, tools, this is so the point of it all, to just try things out. So it out. was yeah. surprising. So mm. I, I kind of trying to get a relationship with it. But um, yeah, I think I'm satisfied. Okay. Yes, it's different and it's kind of, you can immerse it, yourself in it for a while and try to just stay a, a little bit. Abstract. Good. I like it. <laughs> Good. Um, well, you can always go back and give it some more prompts later because yes. uh, it'll okay. find it again. Okay. Uh, what's that? That's my presentation. That's definitely not an album cover. Anna, we haven't forgotten you. We are coming back to you. Okay. Whose is this? This is mine. Uh, this is mine. I just, uh, so my prompt was like. Uh, universe, space, light, melting out of darkness, colors dancing in a atonal rhythm. So, wow. Okay. And and how do you <laughs> feel about it? I like it very much because I like pretty much everything that is like kind of organic and at the same time uh, virtual and at the same and abstract. Mm -hmm. So I'm super happy with the result, actually. Great. I think it's very, um, it's very dynamic, very memorable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whose is this? Uh, that's mine. <coughs> so I don't have an album name for this. Could be kind of electronic dub album, maybe. And the prompt was Dead Bear. Sweet but pissed inside a pirate flag. <laughs> so I, mean, I laughed over. The, uh, say it again because I Sorry. laughed. Over. That bear, sweet but pissed inside the pirate flag. <laughs> That's what came out. I actually pretty. I, well, I, I tried a few others and I, I'm actually pretty happy with the different images that it uh, that came out. It, mm. They really resonate a bit with where where I was going. So I was wondering, like, if. Uh, the more complex the, the prompts, uh, how, how in detail you can get to what you really want to do. So, yeah, but for the first, it was my first prompt ever, so, yeah, pretty, 
Great. Right. Actually, I'm really, I mean, it's brilliant. I'm really happy to hear it was your first prompt ever because this is part of why we're here today is to, yeah, do some firsts. Right, this one. Whose is this? Okay. The microphone, please. Uh, my prompt for this one was uh, sunlight coming into a music production studio through a window, creating Tyndall effect. The sunlight falls, I can't see the rest of it, just give me a second. Uh, oh, it's not. I think it was basically after the sunlight falling on a person sitting and working. Yeah. And how do you feel about this one? I just, uh, the, pers the person is very skewed again, like it looks like, <laughs> like uh, there's no head or and also, I think the perspective I was imagining was a little different, so I didn't, I didn't give it the information of the perspective, mm. which angle and what, so, yeah. I think but the light works very well, but yes, I think yeah, the person's yeah, yeah, yeah. feet have melted in the heat or something, but... Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, tell us about this one. Well, this one is mine. I just type it in uh, Mayday which is the name of one of my songs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit, a bit weird because it's about a, a, a woman that's in a state of emergency because something bad is going to happen to her. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a woman there. So, and I didn't type it in. I just typed Mayday. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know, maybe Mayday, Mayday could be a name mm. for a female name. Mm. Maybe that's why you represented uh, a woman, uh, but uh, yeah, it looks crazy. Yeah. Very strong, effective yeah. image, I think. Um, Hugo, have we heard anything from Anna at all? Yeah, Anna said it's about landscapes and emotion. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Anna. Let's just have another look at Anna's... There we go. It's about landscapes and emotions. Can we, what emotions do we think we can see on this woman's face? She's so white. Yeah. Could you uh, use the mic and just, anyone who's got any, any thoughts on the, on the emotions? Well, from here, <laughs> a bit melancholic, but uh, a bit angry, maybe, like disappointed, I think. Also Mic microphone, please. <laughs> it's also interesting that the uh, arms are like coming to the belly, Boring. like in an uh, expression of kind of pain, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? And she, she's kind of hunched, so it's like a, a closed position. Uh, her posture is, is like a closed posture. One more comment and then we'll. Unless you're very specific, she, she's still white. Yeah. Well, I, I love it because uh, it's, it's personal. Okay. <laughs> it's personal. I th sorry. Also, I think there's the contrast between the closed, the closed uh, body and, uh, posture and face and all the, the openness of the of the surrounding landscape, no? But you also have like a pretty dark area of like uh, like deep forest, a bit uh, uh, scary, and then you have all the open landscape to the right of with the mountains and, uh, and the fields. So. so a lot of intrigue in that image, Anna, that people are picking up on. For me, I think um, I find the face disturbing because it's kind of, uh, I think it's not clear exactly which emotion. It does feel a bit of sadness, a bit of anger, bit of resolve and I think you wouldn't see all those in the natural expression I don't know and the hands what's happened to the hands but but I think um, you know it's provoked a lot of a lot of thoughts a lot of feelings and that's part of the point isn't it um, so yes do think of titles for your image even if they're not album titles because we will come to that later um, so thank you everyone I think this has been really interesting um, I haven't done a sort of prompt in like this before with a group of people and I think it's uh, interesting to see both in terms of your prompts, your creativity, 
but also um, that potentially things like this can be useful. I mean, the, the website that uh, you've been using says that the images are uh, royalty, you know, copyright free, can be used for NFTs, people are using them to make NFTs with. Um, but because in the creative field, we're always having to come up with more and more images, and you might not be able to work with the designer each time or commission someone. So you might want an image for something that's kind of light touch, not an album cover, but maybe a background for a poster or something. So I think on a very practical level, I, th I think we've seen that you know, prompts, even simple ones, even first goes at prompting can actually potentially be very useful. Um, so thank you, that was absolutely amazing. So my next slide was results. Uh, my next slide is, it's about you, not the AI. And my next slide is break, 15 minutes. <laughs> so let's have a coffee, let's have a break. Uh, reflect on the first part of the morning, chat, and come back in 15 minutes. Or maybe, yeah, 15 minutes, yeah. Thank you. Hi, should I switch this off or take it off? <laughs> Should I take, just take it off, or, yeah. or just? So uh, Anna commented that it's nostalgic and profound image, and we asked her about what her prompt was, uh, to which she answered, create an album cover about emotions and countryside landscape, women artists. many kinds of visuals. Um, this is a photo I took a few years ago in the very famous Abbey Road Studios. They have a tech accelerator. Um, they had some VR projects. There's lots going on in VR, but also some of the bigger companies are moving out of VR a bit. Um, various issues, that, you know, the, the technology, the equipment's still quite expensive, perhaps hasn't taken off quite as much <coughs> as it could do. Uh, but that's not to say that as independent artists, we can't do things in VR, because we can. So more about that in a bit. We're not going to do VR today, but I'll tell you a bit more uh, about it. Um, where's my thing? Here we go. Oh. OK. So what we're finding with all these new technologies is there are more visual environments, both for creating in and for performing in as well. Um, and the kind of things we're seeing, very recently, um, a lot of you may know the artist Goldfrapp. So uh, she's got a new album out, Alison Goldfrapp, a solo album, um, her first release in, in many years in her own name. And she's been using what she calls AI vignettes. So not sort of full videos, but little short clips that are AI enhanced. And she's been working with a creative studio to do that. I've no idea of her budget, whether she's got lots to spend, probably a bit more than 
your average musician. Uh, but they're very effective. So she's there and the, the, the environment's sort of revolving around her. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you because we're streaming this live and we don't want to potentially get a copyright strike. And a note on those, one's more likely to get one these days because of AI, uh, because they, um, the AI can spot things. So there we go. That's why copyright strikes are on, on the increase. Um, and then we're seeing AI music videos um, that are incorporating different kinds of um, AI. There's um, one of the early bands to do this a few years ago. It was a band called Love Trapezium. And they did an AI video where they um, used different painterly styles. In the same way that you were picking styles in your um, album covers, they were using that over a whole video. And it was sort of transformed from cartoon through to something that perhaps looked like Leonardo da Vinci or Van Gogh. Um, so that's a, a very interesting one to look at. Um, but, but also there are services that help you create your video. And um, uh, I'll do, give you some details in a minute on those. Uh, and again, that's got a lot of potential because we have to do all the clips for um, Instagram. And, and you know, so if you can have a bit of help with your video, it's definitely useful as an independent artist. And also there are a few platforms that offer AI lyric videos. Now, um, not everyone wants or needs lyric videos, but they can be very useful if you're a bit delayed or getting your video out or you want to get some interest in the track with some kind of video accompaniment ahead of release, then uh, lyric videos are available um, and they can be generated using AI and in a not very expensive way as well, which is interesting. Um, here are also some uh, organizations that are working with visual environments, creating them. There's um, a company called Wristband, which was founded by uh, an independent artist, um, or co-founded by an independent artist, uh, Roman Rapak from Miro Shot. And uh, what's great about that is it's still uh, a sort of work in progress, but there are um, environments there to explore. And it's very much with the artist in mind, the independent artist in mind. They're trying to make these new environments access very accessible. Um, and they have, it's a sort of kind of gaming type of environment. And the idea is there are different venues and you can do hybrid shows potentially, which are in virtual reality and in real life as well. And they've recently had some amazing funding from a big gaming company. Then there's another organization, uh, another company called Volta XR. And they very explicitly state they want to democratize VR and XR, extended reality. And what you can do is download their um, platform for free and experiment with it. And they offer effects. And it, it sort of takes a little bit to get used to the platform. But um, I've certainly managed to create some interesting things in there. Um, and you can add multiple video sources. So you could have video running of something else and live stream a very interesting video. Um, so it's basically putting sort of virtual reality and effects at your fingertips for free. Uh, so they work, they, they offer it up to independent musicians and also they've been testing it out in very big festival situations with DJs, um, you know, adding extra interest to their, their sets. Uh, so well worth checking out and so you can experiment with that. Um, there's another organization called Condense Reality and they've got a, a kind of studio concept, a mobile studio concept where, um, I don't know if it's operating outside the UK yet, I think perhaps not quite yet. Um, and their idea is that they can bring a virtual environment to the artist or set it up in an office. An artist can perform and then um, they provide kind of 3D settings that you can customize. Um, there's an artist, an absolutely brilliant UK artist called Grove, G-R-O-V-E. I should have put their name up, but again, we're um, a bit restricted. I'd have loved to show you a clip. Uh, and there's a, a wonderful video where you see them performing in the virtual reality environment, and then it cuts back, and like they're just in this like little space surrounded, you know, surrounded by... Uh, gear, uh, but the condensed reality idea is that that this studio can just fit in a car and be taken somewhere uh, and be very easy to use. So that's exciting. 
Then uh, some of the bigger organizations, there's a, a, a company called Disguise, and they have a global network of studios, and they've worked with some huge artists like Massive Attack and U2, but when I um, got a, a sort of view, private view if you like, of their studio in London, they were saying they're very keen to get more uh, artists through their studios, and they've got one in Lisbon. Um, I don't know whether it's kind of open, whether you can just get in touch with them and say, can I come and use your studio for not very much money, please? We'll see. But it's good to see that these things are expanding into, um, you know, closer to home. And I think we are going to see a rise in these kind of studios because some uh, music venues are starting to have multimedia production studios as part of their venue so that they can then host shows, stream shows, people can make music videos. So I think a lot of these technologies are, are sort of combining, if you like, and um, everyone's got upping their game on, on what they can offer. Um, Rotor videos are very interesting because it offers a, a sort of AI-powered, customizable way of doing a music video or a clip. Uh, again, very much aimed at independent artists, and I've uh, tried it out a, a few times. So uh, what you do is you upload your music, and it could be a short clip or a, a full song. You can pick some themes and styles, some, some colors, some approaches, add text if you want. You can also add your own clips. They've got a, a big clip library of, sort of generic stuff you can use, but you could, for example, add a few performance clips in, uh, and then it'll create a video for you, and you can see if you like it, and if you like it, then you can pay the money to download it. And I think the current rate is about $30, euros, pounds. I don't know all the conversion rates today. but um, So that's a very interesting one to explore. And then, of course, you've got artists doing their own projects. And whilst you might need some technical knowledge, you don't necessarily need you know, to have a vast amount. There was a, a very memorable project during the first lockdown in the UK where a band called Sweat created their own virtual environment. And it was really atmospheric. Um, it, was, it was like being in a sort of abandoned club at the end of the universe. And they uh, created a way of performing there where, where their images, their performance images were quite glitchy. Um, and to my mind, and, and everyone I've showed it to, uh, it felt much more engaging and real than many of the big budget kind of virtual reality concert environments. Uh, perhaps because it had that set of darkness and a bit of grit about it. So I'd recommend checking out Sweat. And they had another lovely thing within it where they had a virtual merch table that connected to Bandcamp. So um, it was a browser-based VR, uh, so you could just sort of drag and think, you know, use your mouse and move around. And then you'd see the merch table, you could click on a merch item uh, of the band, because they would have multi-band bills. You get taken through to Bandcamp, and then you could buy, which for artists who couldn't perform in lockdown was brilliant. So I think um, uh, we were talking in the round table last night about tech, and uh, I think I slightly randomly came up with the expression, you need to kick it around a bit. But I, I stand by that today, um, which is experimenting you know, can, bring, can bring so much. And there's another um, DIY example. I'll, actually, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, so as well as uh, things that help you create environments, there are existing environments that you can use. And there's one very interesting one called New Art City. And it's online. Uh, it builds itself as a sort of gallery space, and, uh, but it's not just used by um, visual artists who just do kind of two, 2D, 3D. It's being used by clubs in London, like Corsica Studios. It's being used for um, performance-type VR experiences. Um, and it's you know, very accessible, again. So if you're working in this space and you think, I'd love to do a group show in the metaverse with in, you know, VR, audiovisual things that people can experiment with. So that's your place to go. It's really very exciting. And it's very global as well. There's, there's um, things happening there from all kinds of countries. Um, and then our, our good old friends, YouTube and Amazon. So um, uh, YouTube provides a kind of 
virtual environment that you can use. And uh, there's a, I'll talk about an artist who's using it in, in a moment. And also um, Amazon Music, they host shows. And there's a, an artist, a UK artist called Bishy, who's an amazing um, electronic slash classical artist and an amazing singer, plays the sitar. And she did a very memorable concert for Amazon Music using Volta XR effects. Um, and one of the nice things about just going back to Volta is they work very closely with artists. So Bishy has had quite a, an input, if you like, into what they've been doing. Um, so just back to the idea of getting engaged with creator studios again. Uh, so um, one person I recommend you check out um, is Cleo, and she's got a cyber pop club. And uh, her Instagram is Cleo is online. And um, I first met her when I was moderating a panel on VR at a, a conference a couple of years ago. And she um, is, works a lot in AR, VR, and she's created her own environment for these concerts um, that uses YouTube for broadcast. Uh, and the joyful thing about what she's doing is, you know, it's her environment, but also she's hosting, she's curating, and she's created like a global cyber pop club because she has guest artists along, and uh, they may be from you know, any country, but they all have something in common, which is they describe themselves or think of themselves as cyber pop. And uh, the way it works is the, uh, the performances are pre-recorded, but they're, they're broadcast at a particular time. People buy a ticket, and then they can see the performances go out live, and you can you know, have a look around and, and experience the environment as well. And it's a great example of what people as artists can do themselves. So I think uh, something to be inspired. Uh, so we're going to move on now to um, a bit more of a business side of things, new markets and distribution. Again, one could talk about this for days. I'm just going to pick out a few things to, to talk to you about. So, new markets. One of the things about these new technologies is they're bringing music closer to other creative fields like gaming. And when you look at the gaming market being 202 billion last year, there's a lot of money in gaming. How do we get into gaming? <laughs> You'll all be asking. Well, obviously, some people get, uh, you know, can manage to do gaming soundtracks, but increasingly, there's things like experiences, gaming type experiences musicians, musicians are doing, and also merch. Um, I think Lil, Lil Nas has made many millions of, of merch in game. Uh, Roblox has a market uh, where you can sell stuff that you've made for use in Roblox. Um, and people like the festival Mutech are experimenting. Uh, where they've had um, audiovisual performances, they are uh, selling those on Steam, which is a gaming marketplace. So in terms of potential outlets for music, Obviously, these things are combined with, you know, gaming-type elements and visuals, but, you know, the world is our oyster these days because everything kind of hooks up, you know. Um, and then there's also Pixelinx, which was founded by Dead Mouse and Richie Horton, and they two are doing this amazing hybrid of sort of gaming experiences and NFTs and getting artists involved. So um, there's a lot out there to, to start exploring. And another very interesting market that's getting more accessible to musicians because of these new technologies is wellness. Now, wellness, uh, the market's been uh, classed as being like $4.4 trillion as a market last year. Huge, absolutely huge. And the, the things that it's interesting to see are how musicians are accessing this kind of wellness market. So music for healing. Music for healing is huge. Um, it doesn't mean that you know, we all need a, a shaman to work with for our music, but a lot of it's actually it's like ambient, relaxing music, and that can count as music for healing. Um, there's an artist called Richard Norris uh, of The Grid and other uh, bands, and he's done a, a whole series of music for healing type releases on vinyl, also available digitally. Yeah. Yes, Richard Norris. Yeah, N O R R I S. I should have put it out. But um, so people are sort of combining you know, physical product. 
Um, wellness apps. These are growing hugely. Uh, one of the projects I had a, a joy to um, tutor on the Jump EU scheme was a Flower of Sound, and they're creating a whole uh, wellness app with VR and music and um, collecting uh, music from other artists to put in it. So there's a lot of things going on. And some uh, of these sort of wellness and relaxation apps actively ask people to send them, um, send them work. And then also experiences. So these can be online experiences. Um, but in real life experiences too are a, a market for musicians. I mean, it, you may not all have sound bath equipment, but sound baths are absolutely sold out everywhere. They're, they've, I think the market's gone up about three times, 300% recently, um, because people, you know, people recognize the importance of sound. And uh, so people who can offer experiences for, for meditation, for um, even experiencing an album, perhaps with, you know, with a nice sound system in the dark, there's lots of things going on that you may not have thought of as a way to promote your music, but experiences are huge. Uh, now I'm going to come to NFTs, a new revenue... Re sorry, slow down. <laughs> new revenue streams. I think I'll, I'll knock that bit off that slide next time. Um, so NFTs, obviously hugely controversial. Uh, I, for people who weren't there, I... Sorry, you missed the round table last night, but there was a very interesting discussion at the round table last night. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on the controversy. I'm going to take a look at independent artists and NFTs. So generally, we hear about you know, the, the many millions generated from NFTs by mega artists. Um, and certainly, the global music NFT market is estimated at 1.2 billion, which is huge. Now, we know there are ethical issues about um, environmental the environment, uh, whether it's a bubble waiting to burst. But I think, again, this is one of the moments where you just have to take a step back and go, well, there's all that going on, but is it useful to me? And the answer is potentially yes. Um, if you're thinking of creating an NFT, then there are things you have to bear in mind, try and work out what's right for you, the values, if you like. Uh, and those key things, in my mind, are quantity, do you want to have one thing that's very exclusive? Have you got the kind of fan base that loves an exclusive thing? Do you want to have an edition of 500 that's a bit cheaper? Um, current thinking on, NFT, on NFTs is that they're going to settle down to the price of an album. The vast majority are going to be lots available for not so much money. Um, but there still will be exclusive editions. We've had you know, Snoop Dogg. Boy George, some of the sort of legends doing NFTs. We've had Mick Jagger doing an NFT to raise money for a um, music charity in the UK. So lots of people are, are doing it. Um, and then there's pricing. Again, you know, do you want something that'll sell for, for 20 euros? Or would your fan base tolerate 200 euros and there's only one? Think about all these things. And again, accessibility. Um, you know, can you find a platform where people don't have to be experts in crypto to get your NFT? There are those around. Uh, and also, artists who are doing a lot of work with NFTs, particularly independent artists, really value what they say is a connection. Because uh, you're not going through um, the traditional music platform, and they, have, they feel they have a more direct connection with the fan, so that they can perhaps drop them a free remix every now and again. And they see it as a new way of um, encouraging their fan base or, or building that relationship. Lots to think about there. Uh, but I'm going to kind of ground this in something more concrete. So this is Pete Bennett, who has an NFT alias Cranoletto. Now, Pete is a brilliant musician. He's very well known as a musician, but he's not a famous person, OK? So he's an independent artist who's, uh, who tours uh, with other artists, releases his own work, um, is also uh, works in visuals as well. He, he's a photographer, he paints. Um, but he's not, you know, he, he's, he's not a megabucks kind of artist. I say highly respected. So he's been issuing his own NFTs. 
and um, with some degree of success. The thing you have to bear in mind with NFTs is there is a lot of hype, and a lot of them don't sell. I mean, I've seen some very hyped people, you see they've sold one or two, but there's still like 10 with no bids at all. You know, so, so you just have to bear all that in mind. But for an artist like Pete, you know, selling two NFTs at £5,000 each, that's a lot more than you'll get from Spotify. You know. So whilst I'm not an NFT evangelist, I'd call myself an NFT pragmatist, and I think it's definitely worth experimenting with these things if, you know, if you've got something you'd like to, like to share. And talking about kind of fan power, there's a, a huge band called Avenge Sevenfold. And uh, for some time, they've been running an NFT fan club called the Death Bats Club. And they've got such influence that they um, managed to do a, a partnership with Ticketmaster. And it's being described as they driving the partnership so that Ticketmaster would do pre-sales for their fan club. So um, it shows that when you're doing something in the tech space, there is potential there to carve out new ways of working that work for you. And with NFTs being sort of blockchain-based, um, you can uh, it, they're seeing it as a way of stopping ticket touts and offering fans special treats as well. So that's a, a very interesting uh, example. Uh, we have a question online about ah, yes, uh, yeah. <coughs> about this uh, from Sofia Marques. Um, she asks, do you feel like NFTs are an option only in some markets? Uh, I mean, in Portugal, there's few experiments with NFTs in music, and the few that happened weren't very successful. Do you feel like it's somehow connected with the purchasing power? Um, it's hard, obviously, for me to judge Portugal versus other countries. I think NFTs are a, a global thing, and not all NFTs have to be expensive. Um, and uh, so uh, there may be different uptakes in different countries, but I certainly think it's worth having a go. Uh, I hope that's answered. I hope that's answered the question. Um, so here's, here's getting started, getting started with NFTs. Um, how do you hop on the NFT bus if you're an independent artist. So there are quite a few platforms that bill themselves as emerging artists or independent artist friendly. Um, there's much more than are on this list, but I've picked two. One is uh, voice.com, which is the one that our friend Pete Bennett uses. And there's one called publicpressure.io as well, which again aims to be helpful for independent and emerging artists with low barriers to entry. Uh, one of the very big ones that's used by uh, bigger artists like Imogen Heap is OpenSea as well. That's quite a popular one. So I can't sort of say, I can't recommend one uh, platform as the ultimate place to be, but here's just a few and you can certainly explore those. Uh, we're going to come back to MFT, <laughs> NFTs a bit later. But uh, one of the things I want to uh, talk about very briefly is activism, which is um, some independent artists have very strong beliefs. Uh, they're activists, they may have political beliefs, uh, they may be fighting for uh, racial justice. Um, you know, and we've seen uh, a lot of um, activism can do very well with technology. Um, as a great example, Pussy Riot, the, the Russian band, and they've had some very interesting NFT experiments. They did um, a Ukraine flag NFT to raise money for Ukraine, which was wildly successful. And before then, they'd done several NFTs that were fundraisers for women's refuges, for charity. Uh, a million by now. But um, activism is really, really aiming these technologies for yourself. Uh, while we're on act activism, there's a, a futurist in the UK called Dan Sodergren, and he is adamant that uh, especially AI is going to give the workers more power, uh, especially in the field of co cooperatives, but generally because it gives people um, more agency, because you have tools that are easy to use, you can be more productive in your own projects. So we'll see, but that's a very interesting prediction. How are we doing for time? Okay. Um, 
Let's talk about communities for a bit as well. So it's a very curated tour of technologies. So this is perhaps a more uh, traditional photo of a community that I took at a show some time ago. It's an audience, it's a band. You know, where are the communities? Um, I expect by now many of you have used Discord. Is there anyone who's not used Discord? Okay. It's, it's like a sort of chat channel, lots of people, well, many channels, uh, but it's increasingly used by technologists, by music and tech people, and by artists as a, a place to, to communicate with fans, uh, to find collaborators, fans, uh, to find collaborators. So um, very, very good place to, to hang out. And also, if you want to try some of these technologies out, then it's well worth joining the Discord channel. Um, so for example, Wristband, the, uh, the virtual reality environment, uh, they have a Discord channel. They, you know, it's one of the ways they find um, performers for their spaces. Um, so it does give you a very direct connection that's more powerful than an email even. Um, From Our Minds is another one. I, th I think that's a Richie Horton one. So you can communicate directly with the people who are building the, the structures for uh, artists' NFTs and performance and interaction. Um, and then in Berlin, there's a, a creative organization called Sound Obsessed. They're doing a lot of work with, uh, they've been working with uh, a techno DJ duo called Panpot on sort of hybrid performance experiences. And again, you can just join their Discord and, and start talking to people. Um, a slight word of warning. <laughs> It can be overwhelming, especially because it's another, you know, another platform, if you're using other platforms. But if there's something you particularly want to do, then I say joining the Discord attached to that project is really worth doing. Um, and here's a little, it's, it's a community and a project and an instrument, if you like, Endless FM. And that's not a typing mistake, that's three S's. Uh, it was founded by uh, Tim Exile, who's a very well-respected and quite famous electronic artist. And uh, it's both a, a sort of instrument for doing jamming on. So it has a, an international community of people who jam up little tunes using this wonderful, very intuitive app. Um, and it's amazing how you can build through music, an international community of people who talk to each other and then they have Twitch streams and jam live. Um, I have to say, I don't use it for jamming, but I love the app as a little kind of sketch pad if I'm thinking I want to do a bit of something, I want to make a bit of music. And quite a few little things I've jammed up on it have ended up on releases. Uh, so it's, I think, taking a step back, some of these technologies enable kind of multi factor experiences that we couldn't have before. You know, if you've got your straightforward synth, you can't talk to somebody on it or share your jam from the synth. You know, so um, there's so much going on. Um, and when it comes to communities, though, I think even simple ways of communicating and having a community are worthwhile. So in spite of all this technology, just something as simple as an online group can be amazing. So some of you may know Sophia, who's an amazing artist. Um, I knew she was from Portugal, but I didn't actually realize she was from here. And so uh, this is us last night after the round table. So um, Sophia and I are both members of an online group for women and non-binary producers and studio engineers called 2% Rising. Uh, it's an amazing bunch of people, all levels in music, and some of them have won producer awards and so on. And it started in lockdown. Uh, it's grown and grown. It's sort of mostly European, but a bit more international than that. And uh, amazing place to, to hang out, to get support from technical support to check out my new release. So I've known Sophia online for a couple of years now, and we finally got to meet last night, which is amazing. Um, and it was a bit of a surprise, because she'd been reading the program and saw my name, and then she got in touch. I said, oh my goodness, I had no idea. So um, there's a bigger picture takeaway from that. It's just value your community, whether it's on Endless FM, your local community, your online community, because uh, you, know, you can make things happen with a strong community. Sorry? 2% uh, rising. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you know any women 
uh, and non-binary producers and engineers, they're very welcome to join. It's a Facebook group. Um, right, there's an expression, oops, in, uh, in English called secret source. So what is the secret source for innovation in music and tech? Um, and you could call it a few things. So um, hybridization is a slightly fancy name for it. Uh, but it's like the edges. It, the change happens at the edges. Change happens when we use things in ways they're not designed to be used. Change happens when we mix things up. And it's very interesting to see what happens when people remix tech, because there's a lot of this hybridization, remix happening, and um, in both directions. It's not necessarily all towards the tech side. Sometimes it's incorporating some of the things we already have with the tech. So a few examples of this are uh, Patton, who's the British artist who's created an album solely from the AI samples. So as well as offering the album, which is like super new tech AI, he's actually offered on his band camp hand-burned CDRs because people still love the physical, no matter how much you know, is in the uh, metaverse or online. You know, people love physical objects. Um, Portrait, who I mentioned earlier, who works a lot in AI, she offers an NFT and vinyl, so a limited edition vinyl and NFT. Um, some artists offer a sort of NFT and tickets. Um, Kings of Leon, famously a couple of years ago, did a big, big NFT project, and you could get uh, NFT get with vinyl, with tickets. With there was a golden ticket that offered you, I think, a VIP treatment to all of their concerts for the rest of your life, and a limo, I think, to the show as well. Um, and then I mentioned Pan Pot earlier. This. this uh, DJ duo working with Sound Obsessed in Berlin. So they've done a sort of hybrid um, 3D VR experience where, so it was VR, they performed as avatars, but they were also triggering live effects within the performance. So they could um, trigger like fire. So there's a, so do check out the video. They, there's moments where they're both up flaming, and you say, wow, I mean, you probably wouldn't do that in real life, but as a hybrid VR avatar experience that you could attend, you could watch or attend as a member of the audience, it was pretty amazing. Uh, so, yeah, so just you know, think around these things. There's lo lots of things you can try. Uh, that's Patton, uh, the, the album that, uh, that he did was called Mirage FM. I was playing it while I was finishing the presentation off. Um, so I suppose my takeaway on this hybridization remix is be fluid. You know, the, the only boundaries are your mind, really. And budget, obviously, independent artists, budget can be a thing, but be, flu be as fluid as you can be. Um, so there's one more potential activity, and it's been completely voluntary, um, and that is, would you like to make an NFT right now? So um, if you go to voice.com, uh, now to do this, you need to set up an account. It's not a compulsory activity. I don't want to force anyone to set up an account, but it's very easy to set up an account on voice.com. Uh, you don't have to do anything very much. You might want to set up an account. And it's also very easy to mint an NFT. Um, unfortunately, I think they've recently removed the possibility of doing the minting from the phone. So uh, I think only people with a laptop would be able to do it today. But you could certainly sign up and have a poke around. And what would be absolutely amazing would be if somebody went through the whole process, or some of you. So what I was vaguely thinking, or, or concretely thinking, was uh, some of us, we've got the album cover. Uh, we've got a potential title. Might not be the title for an album. Could just be a title of the image. Um, you probably all know how to manipulate an image or add some text. You may want to add some sound. You might have something, you don't have to have sound, but you might have something knocking around on your laptop that's a bit of sound. What's happening here? Have you created an account? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, 
Well, why don't you let, let me finish talking and then maybe decide when you when you work out what materials you've got. So, um, so you've potentially got an image already, but you can create a new one. Uh, you may have some audio on your laptop. You may just want to go and record something very quickly or play a few notes. This is very free form. This. Uh, concluding section, if you like. Um, but I think it would be a wonderful experience just to see how far you get with creating. It can be just an image, still image. It can be uh, an image with audio. Um, you're all creative people. You probably already use things like maybe Canva to attach audio to video. Um, or you may just want to do a still image. But Whatever, whatever you've got handy, see it as a bit like um, if you go scavenging on the foreshore, if you go to the beach and you just pick up a few shells and then you think, oh, that would look nice if I put some, put some string on them and made it into a, a thing. So see it as that. It's, again, it's a quick and dirty thing. You can always delete it later. Um, but see how you get on and see if you want to put something together. And if you're not on a laptop, you could just look at the platform, see what's on there, look at the pricing, um, see how the search works, uh, and you don't have to connect it to a, a particular wallet. Um, again, we want to get on to some other things, so I'm not going to rush you, but I think we probably have maybe about 20 minutes for this, so when I say quick and dirty, I mean it. And then there'll be time for a Q&A afterwards. So um, how does that sound? Has everyone managed to get in OK and have a look around? I've got an account on there. I was thinking I might try and do an NFT at the same time, but I think because I might need to answer questions, I probably won't. But anyone in music has just got some random bit of music on their laptop that they don't know what to do with, so now is the chance. Um, if you want, to, you don't have to use the straightforward album cover. You can scratch it up, chop it up, use something completely different, whatever, whatever you feel like doing, but you have an image you can use if you want. And for anyone watching online, you can do it too. Uh, yeah. And I think don't worry about being quiet. You don't have to have your headphones on. I think if there's a if there's a sort of happy hubbub of things going on, that's fine. I might just log into my account just to, um, just so I can show anyone who's not managed to access it how it works. Um, and the plan is, when you've done it, or however far you've got, if you could upload the screenshot to our folder again, and then we can have a little look. Is it possible to cut the screen for a minute? Yeah. Just so that my laptop's not. Yes, yeah, just because I want to put some passwords in and stuff. Yeah, right, okay. Not that I don't trust people, but yeah. I could just. Okay, thank you. If you want, you can just uh, click on this. Ah, brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Internet's being a little bit slow, is it? Okay. So 
So for anyone who hasn't had a chance to look at it yet, I'm going to sit down for this, actually. I'll do a little tour around. Um, so they're specially billing themselves as the community of emerging artists. And the interface for creating is um, really quite straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, it would. If it's being, if you're attaching it to uh, a visual thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there isn't quite time to go down to the sea, but if you feel the need to go out and photograph something or record something, there's time to do that. And if you've got a, a phone, not a laptop, you can do the creation. I think you just can't do the final stage for now, so don't feel excluded. I would love to be able to do the first one with my brother to the best of the Oh, really? OK. Uh, just to be oh, fantastic. Well, you've just done one. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Right, we have a... <laughs> no, it's not a competition, but <laughs> the first yeah. one. Because I, I didn't put it, put it for sale, but yes. I don't know. It's just a photo. Fantastic. Project, so. um, could you screenshot it and upload sure. it to our folder, please? Yeah. That would be amazing. Wow. How many minutes did that take? 10? 15? 10? 10. Wow. There we go. I, I should have brought some little medals along. So go, I made an NFT today. You know how you get badges at school? <coughs> And then you can think about how you might want to distribute it like, you know, yeah, later. Yeah. And um, if I receive for sale, is it public? Yes. So just everyone, anyone can, okay. But I didn't set up a, a price. No, it's just, uh, no, you'd need to do that. I think it's, it's not part of, of, the, of the process of choosing an NFT. Yeah. Uh, For the uh, which verification? If you want to, so that's how you get. Um, I think with pricing, it's it's quite a tricky one because um, you know there are things on there that are five thousand um, pounds, but there are cheaper things. And if it's something you've just made, you might want to just do it cheaply just to kind of just to see. Yeah. But it's entirely up to you. It's part of the experiment. Thank you. 
Yeah. You have? Oh, great. I've got that with this will go. Let's have a look. Fantastic. Okay. Well, decide what you want to do. It's got that text on it, hasn't it? I know. It's just like, I just <laughs> want to see where I could get. Yeah, yeah. It. You've done well. Well, screenshot yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anyone who's, who's done one, please screenshot and upload. Um, and if you've done a multimedia one, then uh, it'll be uploaded as a, you'll need to upload it as a video. I, I, I think you can export them. It's an experiment. If you get stuck with verifying, then you can come back to it. Um. If anyone's joining us uh, online um, and didn't see the uh, link for the folder that we're uploading things to, I'm just going to go back to our AI album experiment. So the link, if you want to, if you're at home and you want to upload, is https slash slash bitly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Avero, Avero with a capital A and then capital T, capital T. I'll just leave that up for a few minutes. Um, so we've, we've done the album covers already, but that is the link for the NFT. Um, I'm, I'm done with the repository check. Uh, what's, what's that do? Um, send the NFT to you. Yep. Do you want to send it to yourself and then? Um, then I'll send it to you. Send it to yourself, so you've definitely got the copy the there. I think the CCD will be on iCloud now, I guess. That's the first that would be. Yeah. So, do you, does it send you a video copy? Yes. Okay. Okay, well, if you can upload it to the folder, that's great. If not, just upload the screenshot. Um, yes, you could send the link. Terry with a Y at kitmonsters.com. Uh, kitmonsters.com. T E W R Y at kitmonsters.com. Kit monsters yeah. How's everyone doing for time? Um, we might go a little bit over because we started a bit late, but um, you will get lunch, don't worry. Some of you have already done it, you're <laughs> twiddling your thumbs. <laughs>
Did you send it? The link? Yes, I did send it. Ah, okay, all right. Creating uh, libraries of, of sounds is, 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 has been done in N NFTs. Uh, sorry, libraries of sound, what, to use in NFTs? If you create, a, if you are a sound designer, mm. you create a special library of sounds mm. and you want to make that an NFT. Um, that's certainly possible. I don't know which platforms specialize, but do you do spatial sound? Not, not a special but sound. But you design sound, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I design sound and also. Um, but could be uh, a good way to, to sell uh, li libraries, special libraries. Possibly, to use yeah. in, uh, yeah. in I, I some applications. I don't know whether there are some or not, but I think that does sound like an interesting idea, yeah. Yes, I did. I've just I've got it here. Thank you. Um. If, if uh, those those li libraries can mm -hmm. be connected to movies, or um, anything we can be connected to anything else. Uh, but I think um, you need to be sort of quite focused on what you know what you're trying to do. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people find actually uh, it's easier to do something like a, a, a library or sample pack via Bandcamp because people can download it easily. Imagine uh, you can be a special owner of a library of a, a, a big movie. For example, interesting, and that that can get a high value for that if it is being associated. Yep. Um, how's everyone doing? Sorry, you sent one as well. Okay, great. I'll I'll get them. I'll get them all open. <laughs> That's very kind. <laughs> I can play it, but I don't. I don't. If I haven't. I haven't claimed it. I haven't uh, accepted the claim. I'm just trying to play it. Okay. Uh, and you've emailed that, have you? I think so. Cool. Okay. I've got so many tabs open. I need to sort of work out what's happening where. Yep. Um. Okay. How's everyone doing? I'm not going to rush you. <laughs> I, I, but I, if you want to do Q&A afterwards, uh, just need to bear that in mind. Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm opening up the audiovisual ones. So if you've got an audiovisual one, you want to send me the link, um, then it's Terry with a Y at kitmonsters.com. How you doing? This is very exciting. And I'm already uh, jumped by this uh, picture. It's already here. Cool. Um, if it's an audiovisual one, I think you can't necessarily exp just export it as a movie or something. So you can send me the link and I'll open it up on the browser. Um, email me the link. Uh, 
If, you're, if you've just got a static one, you can just do a screenshot or something. Is there anyone who's not making one? It's fine, I won't judge you, but just so I know who's, who's so you do not, okay, all right. So I should have one, two, use, are you stuck? Oh, right, okay. Did, did you do a screenshot? If you could do a screenshot and uh, upload it to the, send it to me and I'll put it in the folder, that'd be awesome. Yep, email me the link, Terry with a Y at kitmonsters.com. Terry with a Y, oh, I've got, <laughs> I, sh I'll, I should write it on a card, actually, I've got a card. Because um, then if it's on a link, I can open it up and should be able to spit it straight out. Yep, I, is it your own copyright? Yes. Yeah, perfect. There we go. So, Terry, oh, my writing's rubbish. Terry at kitmonsters.com. Sorry? Uh, Terry at kitmonsters.com. It's on the card. Thank you. And I'll open it up. Okay, anybody still got one to submit? Thank you. Okay. I'm so excited to see these. This is just amazing. I keep hearing this heavenly music in the background. I thought, oh, should I, should I record some of that? Thought, no, no, not my copyright. Okay, I've got moshed. Is that your one, Hugo? Yeah. Cool. Um, right, who else has left? Anybody else got one to send? I got yours, yeah. There's some creative work going on over there. Mm -hmm. I'm not forgot. One, two, okay, three, I'm four. Five. Okay. Don't don't worry. Try again. Are you are you finishing one off? Did you send one? No. A screenshot or the link, whichever is easier. And very soon all will be revealed. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. Miguel, thank you, I've got yours. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm waiting for one more. Oh, here we go. Ritowski. Yeah. Okay. All right then. So uh, let's let's see what we've got. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and you're on seven. That sounds about right. But if anyone gets missed off, you must tell me very loudly. I'm sure you will. <laughs> okay. So let's have a look at them and a listen, and and then we can just have a little. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, right, self atomica. This um, is mine. Is it an audiovisual one or is it no, just, just, static just an image? Just an image, yeah. Okay, so tell, just tell us very briefly about this one. Yeah, this is a, a photograph for my pro music project. It's mm -hmm. uh, all me. So representing... Oh, yes! Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> representing the, the multiple uh, musicians, the drummer, the piano player, the yeah. singer, the bass player, and the conductor, maestro. So yeah. uh, it's a photo shoot I did myself, so it's like a, my band. Uh, image. Wow, so impressive. Yeah. I love the title as well. Is that the project title? Yeah, yeah, Self Atomica. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how how did you find getting th getting through to the uh, you know creating this? The the NFTs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Pretty easy. Um, I, I had some doubts because I, it's not for sale, so you, I've just sent you as a gift. Um, Thank you. When you when you have to, it was a mistake. <laughs> Well, if I don't claim it, I think you yeah. can re it. Uh, yeah, that's it. fine. Um, but if I want to put it out for sale, I have to um, confirm my identity, yeah. so go through all that process, make sure that I'm a human being and I'm um, who I, I, I'm saying I, I am. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, pretty easy to 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 set up. Great, uh, and I can see that. So you're on Polygon, and you've got the category digital yeah, photography. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah. Okay, yeah. right. Cool. Let's the next one, this is an audiovisual one, apocalyptical. Okay. Yeah, this is actually just, just an audio. Let's listen to it. Oh, it's three minutes, maybe we won't listen to all of it. So we'll listen to this bit. Okay, very atmospheric. Fast forward to it. you there but uh, so let's have a look uh, you told us about the track do you want to say any, any, anything about creating it yeah so I uh, this is this was one of the so I, I did a scoring project last year mm -hmm. for a dance company mm -hmm. and uh, this was one of the scapes that I made they did not use it right. so it's still just lying with me and I was like okay I'll just upload this and fantastic <laughs> that's yeah. the spirit <laughs> brilliant okay uh, right, next one, they're just in the sort of order. Let me just uh, open this up. Oh, the internet's being a bit slow. Okay. So, Needle March. Is there audio on this or is it a video? It's a small video. I was saying that this is just a short, an excerpt from a live session that I did. Mm. 
Uh, and I just cut a little piece now to make this NFT. Brilliant. Um, because I work as a visual jammer, like a visual jockey. But right. I like to okay. say visual, visual jammer. jammer. Fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations, everybody. You've done it so far. Wow. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, okay, Unknown Night Tale. Miguel, do we also, let's just play it for a bit. Well, I, well, uh, I, I guess I, I just made this uh, at night. I was just uh, composing some with VST mm -hmm. uh, instruments, and I just layered them like in a minimalistic way, mm -hmm. and that just happened. I mean, I actually found this on a on a project that I was working at at the end of the project was like <laughs> something I created and it was like, okay, I don't like this. <laughs> and it was at the end, but then I, I saw it and I kind of find it interesting. So I just kind of exported it right now. Now so you know what to do. There's little bits that don't quite fit in any <laughs> yeah. of your tracks. Yeah. Yes. Like NFT. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Right, moshed. Okay. Let's go moshed. Just that. <laughs> I think this is prime NFT material. <laughs> it's very gratifying, very quickly. Um, fantastic. So, so get, grab the mic and just tell us a bit about, just briefly about making it and how you found making your NFT. Uh, well, I just Googled the uh, glitch, free glitch online app and uh, came out with an with a app called Mosh. Uh, and then took the first uh, seconds of some track I was producing that was... Uh, lying around and uh, yeah that, that's basically it it's uh, it's on sale for 47,000 euros if uh, dollars <laughs> if someone is interested uh, excellent <laughs> excellent um, well uh, we can make uh, for the highest price you know we start off at 47,000 <laughs> <laughs> wonderful I'm glad um, you told us about using the app because I haven't really gone into apps because obviously there's thousands but I'm a huge fan of using apps as part of a process. Now, sometimes reprocess some of my music videos with bits of app in just to get some effects because I haven't got a big, you know, I'm not a visual effects specialist or anything. Um, so I think sometimes layering apps or doing unusual things with apps can really be a very, very creative thing to do. Okay, so let's, uh, synesthesia. Use synesthesia. Okay, this is a digital illustration. So tell us, yeah, tell us about making it and how it was. It's not mine. I just used uh, it's it's a cover for a record of mine, mm -hmm. <coughs> and I had it laying laying around here, just right. trying to to use an NFT for the first time. It's just the album cover, actually. Mm -hmm. So cool. Not n nothing fancy about it. But you gave it I tried to actually I tried to put on music, but I didn't couldn't figure it out. Right, it's, it's yeah, platform. it can be quite hard to, um, yeah. unless there's something you already use regularly, trying to get your workflow to yeah, my first time. marry media, it's a well fun. Right, and then we've got, um, we've got this one. Okay, I'm not sure if I can enlarge it actually. Uh, it's a version yeah. of, it's, it's actually an NFT in the making version of the one we had earlier. So should I just bring yeah, up? I was limited to, to a mobile phone, so I was just curious about the process of um, creating my first um, NFT. Right. Yeah. That's great. Being curious is why um, we're all creative people. And, and you actually, know, you, it's you, like you can do on your phone. Because in the beginning, I think we said that we were not able like to um, go through a verification thing like that on the phone, but 
fireplace? It's possible that, that because when people are developing apps, they do have moments where they're not functioning at full functionality. So it's possible that when I last looked, you know, it was that and, and they fixed it, which is great. Good for great. Us. Okay. Well, I think this is absolutely amazing, quite frankly. <laughs> Wonderful. Well done, everybody. Um, so I think, actually, you've sort of um, formed your own conclusion or written your own conclusion, which is that there's lots of amazing tech out there. Experimenting, kicking it around, mixing it with other things is the way to go. And there are some very practical tools that can help us with some of the simple things like chat GPT and event planning or, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I hope it's been a, an interesting voyage. Um, I realize it's kind of lunchtime, but if you want to stay for a little bit and do a bit of q and A, I I'm really happy to do that. Um, but also, if you need to go, I appreciate that as well. So let's put on the Q&A slides and prepare, <laughs> prepare for Q&A. But, um, yeah, okay. Anybody want to chat about anything? Sorry? Happy. You need to have lunch. Okay, yeah. Sorry, it's we because we started a bit late because the tech stuff. Don't worry, it's fine. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Get the, grab the mic if you've got a question. Uh, so I, I'm interested in just uh, what's the are there any like preferences when it comes to making an audio NFT? Uh, like length of the track, like it was very interesting to see uh, Hugo's, uh, like that shot, it was, it was very gratifying. And then, so like, or it can be like a longer piece or like, does yes, that matter? Yes, it can be. I mean, I, I think um, there's no hard and fast rules. It's all sort of quite new. So sometimes if you've got a very graphic animation image, you want something that's short and impactful. But at the same time, people do make longer ones. Um, actually, one thing I should have said about Pete Bennett is he also offers people a, a PDF of the sheet music to, uh, to his NFT. So it's whatever you want it to be, and you can have add-ons as well that you can give people. Yeah. And just in addition to that question, so when you're selling or buying, uh, you can only uh, work with a specific currency, right? Like you can't, you can't uh, it has to be crypto? Or like, yeah, how does that work? Or even Ethereum, then like it's... Or it's on this one, it, it offers you a choice, okay. uh, but on uh, it varies so much between platforms. Some uh, they do the sort of crypto side of it behind the closed doors, and you can just buy things with a credit card. Okay. Do you see what I mean? So, yeah. depending on what you want, where you want to be, and how you want people to access it, you do have that choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks. There's one closer, actually. Yeah. So you, you talked about um, an IA uh, that works like a, um, a bass sampler. Oh, yes, yeah. I couldn't get the name of it. Yes, I, I probably should have put it on the slide. It's Kieku, K-I-E-K-U, AI tools. And I'm pretty sure they've made it public now. I was testing the beta out, but um, I think it's publicly available now. Okay, and just one other question. Mm -hmm. um, do you use, uh, um, I'm sure you talked about this, but do you use uh, mastering uh, AI tools? Personally? Yes. I don't yes. use it personally. I, um, I work with an amazing mastering engineer who's been mastering all my stuff for years called Katie Tavini, who's been nominated a few times for Mastering Engineer of the Year and is very friendly towards emerging artists as okay. well. And so <laughs> and it's partly not substitute, you can't substitute that. Yes. Well, it, I think it depends what you're trying to achieve and where your things will end up, how you're going to distribute. Um, I like the bespoke approach also because I use a lot of experimentation in my work, say with the AI, it's, it's kind of a bit more complicated perhaps to master than, than other okay. things. But that, anyway, so that's my preference. But also with a lot of these platforms, you can try them before you commit. Do you see what I mean? So you could upload something and, and see how you get on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any more questions? Okay. Well, in that case, I'll, um, I'll close the masterclass. <laughs> thank you so much. It's been absolutely 
brilliant engaging with you around technology. I hope you've all come away with some ideas and had a bit of fun in the process. Um, thank you to the team uh, for inviting me along, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event as well. Thank okay, you. Thank you.